And yeah, the no ranks really make a difference. It's almost like these are like all different percussive hits. And then like the longer notes are kind of... You see what I mean? Like you can get a lot of mileage out of one note just with the length. What's happening here is it's two of these playing together. We got this. And then this. So what we're doing here is this. I actually chopped up this synth loop that I made a while ago. Maybe you guys recognize it, but yeah. So I chopped that up, just literally doing this slice, slice to new MIDI track, and then eighth notes. So you get all these little tiny melodic chunks. And it creates these very pretty little sounds, and then you can create a groove out of those. We have this FM kick. So this kick is entirely synthesized. When I heard these tracks, I noticed they're using a lot of synthesized drums. And I think also it's just cool to kind of break it down on this level. So it's four layers. We got... Right? And these all come together to create this big punchy kick that you hear. So it starts with this main layer. And I'll actually turn all of this like group processing off. So we're making this like thump, right? So it's a sine wave. And then we have a little tiny bit of FM. You can see it's a really short, punchy envelope from these other oscillators. We got a low pass filter with a ton of envelope, a pitch envelope as well. And yeah, it's just like the thump. And then we have this so it starts out like this honestly pretty similar to that thump patch so they're gonna fit together right but then what i did is i'm high passing it distorting it a bit and then high passing again so it just adds the click so we go from this to this now the cake has a bit of click and then we've got this one which starts out kind of like another thump again, just like pitch envelopes with a bit of FM. But then we've got a band pass actually. Overdrive. Little bit of reverb, some more overdrive though. And then a high pass. And then this last layer, which. So you got another one of those thump patches, high pass, some more distortion. And yeah, and you layer all those clicks together with the thump. And then it's sounding like this. A lot of times if your mix sounds wrong, it's probably because you have too much low end cutting through. Like, I really noticed that with like OBI and Svedtech. And when I was studying those tracks, those guys, like, sometimes they're cutting the bass like that even. You know, there's not actually that much sub because the faster you go in tempo... You know, the less room there is for all that, like, woo, right? It's just, just going to weigh the track down. Check out what happens. So you hear that really crunchy kind of mid-range that's happening. Basically, what you're getting, because you're distorting these together and you're letting the low end come through, plus then we're pushing it even harder with this limiter here, you're getting the bass pushing up against the mid-range and the crunch in these loops. And see, it creates that beautiful, crunchy rumble. We're going to start with another kick here. And then quarter notes. And then we're going to duplicate that with the same MIDI. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use an arpeggiator. And you can do either eighth notes or sixteenth notes. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag the start time back a little. So you'll see something happen. See how it becomes more of like that deep rolling bass? I'm going to pass it a bit. And then you're going to distort this a little. EQ at the end, just cut out the deep, deep subs. Cut out like... Same auto pan where we're going to do the fake side chain. So quarter notes, inverted saw wave, no phase. Now we got a little bit of delay, eighth notes on there, so it adds a lot of rhythm. And groove to the track. A bit of distortion after the delay, so the delay gets distorted too, and it sounds nice. So this is where you can really, like, tie it all together. I just have this tiny bit of amp. 
Right? It's only at 8%, but as soon as I turn it on, you can hear it. It's giving nice mid-range and low end to the rumble, and also kind of pushing the kick. But what it really helps to do is kind of glue them together, because they're all under the same umbrella now, right? This, just cutting out some more sub at the end. And then we're converting it to mono, because one thing you guys probably notice if you know about this is all of these sub cuts do tend to add phase issues, especially when you're doing it multiple times and stuff. The good thing is that you really only want your kick and bass to be in mono when it comes to techno anyway, and especially shrines. So you could just, at the end of the chain, you can do as much of this as you want and then just make the whole thing mono. It won't really matter. Got the rim shot is just dry. I've just kind of made it a little bit shorter. And I high passed it too, so it doesn't get in the way of the bass. And then we have some layers to that. Then we have like this little rim shot here. You layer that with the snare, you kind of get like a pitch. Right, you can hear they layer together nicely. And then the other thing that's happening here is then we have these kind of like accent snares. Like we have this one with the reverb, and then also then the tambourine comes. So there's a bit of call and response happening where it's like, See, so you get the one that's dry and then the one with a bunch of reverb, like the call and then the response.